So welcome to the first episode of the Niagara series. This one's gonna be episode zero because it's basically about getting familiar with Unreal Engine, how do you create a Niagara systems, and how do you navigate inside. So this one will be pretty basic, nothing too technical, but I think it's the way to get you started. So first of all, this is what you'll see when you open up a Unreal Engine project. You have your viewport and then your outliner will be on the side with details when you click on any objects in your scene. If you hold your right mouse button and use the WASD on your keyboard, you can kind of fly around the scene. So WASD is moving forward, left to right. You could also use Q and E to fly up and fly down. Also, while you're holding your right mouse key, you can scroll the mouse wheel to control how fast you're flying. So right now I'm flying faster, and right now I'm going slower. And another very useful tip is if you click on an object and hit the F key, you'll focus on the objects. And that means when you hold the Alt key and then just drag your mouse around, you can kind of rotate around the object and always be directly looking at it. So that's the basics of navigating around a world in Unreal Engine. Now to get to your content, which is now called a content drawer after Unreal Engine 5.0 is you hit control and space and that pulls out the drawer. And then right now we're gonna create our first Niagara systems. While we're in our content drawer, we right click and then we have our Niagara systems here. We have a few options on how do you want to start. I usually go with the first one, new systems from selected emitters. And I'll just pick something that's closest to what I want to make and then make alterations from there. So for this tutorial, we're just going to pick fountain, click plus. You could also add multiple emitters to the same systems, but we're just going to keep it to the fountain for now. And after that, you click finish and then name your Niagara system. So now we double click on the systems and then here we're inside our Niagara systems editor. So as you can see, there's a few different windows here. The first one on the left we have is preview. The same as in the editor, we can hold our left mouse button and just drag and we're kind of orbiting around the system. So the system will always be in the center. And now sometimes this may not be what you want. So we can actually click on the menu here and then we just turn off orbit mode. And now we can just fly around the preview window like we did in the scene. And next, let's take a look at the bottom window, which is the timeline. So this is where you can control the simulation of the systems. You can play forward, you can play backward, you could do a pause on a specific moment that you wanna inspect. Like we're paused here and we can still go into the preview window and just turn around and see how the particles are looking. So while your mouse is in the timeline, if you hold shift, you can scroll your mouse wheel and then you can move left and right. If you hold control and scroll, you can zoom in and out. You can also hit the space on your keyboard for a shortcut to pause the system. And also in the timeline, we have a start green bracket and a end red bracket. This will control how long the preview will play for each loop. And we can just shorten this to our desired range. So it will keep looping after roughly three seconds. And in the middle, we have our system overview. The blue one here is the system itself. We have our system properties, system updates, stuff like that. And then the brown ones here are the individual emitters. So when we click on each of these emitters, we can see the details in the selection window here. And this is where we change attributes like the lifetime, the color, the position, how we set up our modules here. We just click on the module and then make the changes in the selection here. Now let's try to add another emitter here. So we just right click on any blank space in the system, add emitter, and let's just add a omnidirectional burst here. So we might want to shrink down the timeline here. So we can see it's giving us a burst in every start of a loop here. On top of each emitter, we have this blue checkbox here, and that can help us disable each emitter. 
So for example, if I don't want a fountain in here, I just want the burst, I can just unclick this fountain. And now we're only seeing the burst here. Let me turn that back on. Another thing that's really useful is this isolation button. So this one kind of works like disabling, but it's just for previewing purposes. So maybe I have a lot of emitters in my system and I just want to focus on one of the emitters for debugging or whatever reasons. I can just click on this icon and I can isolate this emitter. So it's only showing one of the emitters in my system. The same, I could click on the fountain and now I'm only seeing the fountain. When I click it again, I go back where I see every emitter. The same thing goes for each module here. So let's isolate this fountain here. There's a gravity force module here and maybe I don't want gravity force. So I could simply just disable this and now everything is just flying up. Like there's no gravity, like it's in space or something. And then lastly, I want to talk about how to move around in this system overview window. So if you hold your right mouse button, you can move around in this system overview. If you scroll on your mouse button, you can zoom in and zoom out. Another useful feature is if you click on an emitter and press the button C, you can add a comment here and you can write any tips and comment on there to remind yourself or something. And also if you want to organize your emitters so it's very readable, you can select all of it, right click, and then under alignment, we can align the top to it. And maybe we want the spacing to be distributed evenly, so distribute horizontally. And now we have our stacks aligned and it just looks good. So yeah, that's basically it for this episode zero. It's very easy and simple, nothing too technical. Before we dive into our next episode, which we'll be actually explaining what each of these modules and how Niagara system handles simulation, I encourage you to go watch this video I did a while ago that's talking about the basics of Niagara systems. It introduces you to a lot of the basic terms that I'm gonna be using a lot in this series. So I highly recommend you give that a watch. As always, if you have any problems, please comment in the comment section below. If you don't want to miss the rest of this series, please like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.